the traditional ways of small boutique farming is just not viable any longer. Everyone that I know here gets into a car and goes away for work and doesn't, is not able to stay on the farm. What I really was striving for is to be able to keep my car parked. And my farm was going to be a place where it offered enough for us to be able to sustain ourselves and our family. South Pond Farms is a culinary destination. We offer country, weddings, celebrations, farm-to-table food, workshops, teaching people how to use the food that is grown in this area to be a sustainable business. My grandparents, they had this 100-acre farm. I love being there. My grandmother made bread every day. All of these years, I've been so influenced by my grandmother, wanting to grow my own food, cook on a wood stove, all that sort of stuff. I loved where we lived and loved what we how we spent our time, but I also felt that there it was like a real fast-paced road to adulthood and that, that I wanted to just slow it down. And the only way that I could figure out how to do that was to move to the country. We found this place and I fell in love with the land here. The land was absolutely crumbling. The barn was falling down. I needed to make this work. I thought, I have a nice kitchen. I can fit some people in there. I can cook. So I never did a proper business plan. I never did the math on this. It just felt like it was good experience. I could cook for more people than my own family. I was learning a little bit about the math and how to cost something out. And I just felt like I was doing something completely on my own. I said, well, yikes, that's gonna be a situation. I was selling food to the public and I didn't have a hand washing station. I didn't have a proper hooded stove. Really cool to extract that energy off that cavity and use it in the kitchen in some form. Hmm. Hmm. It took me over uh, probably about 18 months to uh, really make do all the things that were required of me. And the biggest requirement was um, actually putting in washrooms and a septic system for uh, 140 guests. People had heard that I had the barn and they wanted to come and use the barn to be married. And I thought, hey, you know, I can do this. I can cook for 140 people, no problem, I can do this. I was absolutely terrified. I bluffed my way Hold through. On. I think that we've got lots of space in here for 120 people. It's open, we're not gonna move anything. We've got drinks, anything else we need to serve? I was able to start offering what my dream was, to create brunches and dinners for people to come and come and sit here and enjoy that food and that we would try to grow as much of our own food as possible. You know, you've got the place to rest. You literally, this, by having this couch here now, it makes it two rooms. People have lost their sense of connection to agriculture. We've lost it and we, we, we want it back. So we want a little tiny piece and we drive out of the city to go to the country, to pick an apple, to eat a carrot, have a meal, or simply just absorb it. I think that's what people are looking for. <laughs>